So one of the things you need for a 2D model is spatially distributed data. And so there are lots of different kinds of spatially distributed data in HTC RAS, but the most common kind that you're gonna need for almost any model is some sort of spatially distributed Manning's end value. And so in this workshop, we showed you one way to do that. In this workshop review, I'm gonna show you a couple of other ways to do that. One way to define Manning's end value is just when you create your cells, you can have a default Manning's end value for everything. But you very rarely want one Manning's end value for everything. I mean, in this case, you've got overbank, you've probably you got forest, you've got fields, you've got agriculture, and you've got the channel itself. The Manning's end values are going to be widely different. So there's really two ways to do it. You can kind of import a map, um, you can draw a map, or you can do something in between, which is kind of standard practice. And then you might also want to then calibrate your end values. And so we have tools for that. And I'm going to kind of walk through all of those. Your Manning's end value are going to live in map layers. A common mistake is people come up here and they see Manning's n in your geometry. And that seems like where you might want to put it, uh, but it is not. All your spatially distributed data, these are all defined in map layers. Uh, and then you will associate them with the geometry. We will go into that Manning's end data to do our calibration and do, to do some update on the geometry scale. But anything you do in map layers, that's gonna propagate across all geometries. You're gonna have this available for, for all geometries. So you wanna do it in the map layer itself. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and we're gonna create a new layer. And you can see there are lots of different kinds of layers. I, I point out this porosity and flow drag layer. I'll probably do a video on that because that's new and really cool. There's obviously some sediment layers if you want spatially distributed sediment data, which you will if you do a sediment model. Uh, but the most basic is what we call a land cover layer. Now you might be looking for Manning's N here. Um, you're not gonna find Manning's N because we actually put percent impervious in there with Manning's N. And so Manning's N and percent impervious kind of together are called land cover. So let's do that. And you get this importer that looks a lot like the train importer. And in the workshop, you did import these data, but I kinda wanna show you what it looks like to just create them from scratch. Uh, let's say you just don't have them, but you want to draw your polygons that you can then associate Manning's end values with. Well, like the terrain, it's a little counterintuitive how to name these things. You go in here to the folder, you open the folder, even though you're not gonna open anything, and we'll just call this draw. We're gonna draw our polygons. Save, and then you're going to create empty. I want you to think about this land cover layer as something that you're going to fill. You're either gonna fill it with raster data or you're gonna fill it with your own drawings. And if you're not putting any raster data in, then you're going to create it empty. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create an empty layer. And it says, hey, uh, which geometries do you wanna associate this with? Let's just say for both of these, I wanna make this drawn layer my default layer. Okay, so now I have this draw layer. Um, we're gonna go directly into what we call classification polygons. Um, because we don't have any raster data, um, we're gonna draw everything. So what you need to know about the classification polygons is that they're going to override each other in the order that you draw them. So later ones will override earlier ones if they overlap. And it's not trivial to change that order. You wanna layer them in in the order that they matter. And so I'm just gonna draw a, a like, base polygon here. And I'm gonna say, that's my base, and my base Manning's end value will be 0 0.08, okay? And then I wanna go in and let's say that I have a forest here. And so I'll say forest, and that's going to be 0 0.009. We'll go in and we'll go in and we'll put a uh, urban area here. We'll say urban, and that'll be 0 0.005. And then we'll go in, I'll just digitize part of the water. We'll do this in more detail later, but we'll say this is actually um, stream and we'll give that everyone's favorite end value of 0 0.0035. Okay, and so then edit the land cover data table, you'll see we have these polygons we created 
and the n values we associated with them and the percent impervious. So let's say the percent impervious is really only if you're doing rain on grid, but urban's gonna be like 65% um, if we wanted to do that. And we're good to go. When we come up in here now to our geometry, now we have this Manning's n and you can see that what it's done is it's turned those vectors into a raster. And if we go to this final n value, it will reflect the n value that we have defined as we kind of tab over it. Okay, so that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is the way that we did it in the workshop. We're actually gonna go and we can create a new map layer, another land cover layer, except this time I'm going to change the name to import. And we're gonna go up here and we're going to get the NLCD data. This is uh, land use data that there's kind of spatial coverage across the United States. Uh, and we will look in here and you know, basically there's a, a field name and classification. If you wanna change these names, now's the time. So you can come in and you know, open water, that's actually gonna be the stream. So I'm gonna change that to stream. We can come in here and then we create. And here you get an editor that kind of does a little work to import it and turn it into the format we need. Uh, and then you, you get this editor again that says, hey, uh, do you want to reassociate? Yeah, I do. I actually, I want to change to my import for both of these now. And that gives me this. And so you can come in here and change these colors if you don't love them to layer properties. Or you can come in here and just say, you know, I want, I want a brighter blue for my stream. And that's the way that you would edit this. And then another thing that you might want to do is you might want to change the transparency so you can just kind of see the terrain underneath. That'll kind of give us a layered vision. All right, so then we go into our edit land cover table and we have Manning's Zen and percent and pervious for all of these things. So we need to go in and define, you know, what we think for each of these. And so I'm going to go in and just put in some numbers that seem right to me, but we may need to go and edit these later. All right, and that'll give us some values. One thing I wanna show you is that in RAS 2025, which is the rewrite that will become standard very shortly, we have these surface layers, it's very similar. And if I come here, you can add a classification layer and let's call it N value. You can, again, import your polygons or you can import a, a grid, but you actually we actually have this button that automatically imports the NLCD data. And so if you push that, it'll grind for a little bit, and then it'll just populate the NLCD data for you, and then you can associate N values with these different land use types. So that's gonna be a lot easier for people in the US uh, shortly. Back to RAS6, because that's the world we live in in this class. Uh, you're not quite done here because there are some issues with this. And let, primarily, I want you to go look at, you know, the NLCD data for your stream. What do we, how do we feel about our stream N values? Yeah, these are not great. If you just kind of accept these you know, 10 meter raster N values, you're just, you're not gonna capture the stream at all. It doesn't really matter in the floodplains cause you know, a lot of that is gonna be weighted anyways, but any kind of linear features, particularly a stream, you actually want to go in and make your own vectors. And so we're not done here. We actually still need to use a classification polygon. And so we're gonna go in and we're going to draw the stream and I'm going to actually just go to my terrain and draw it from my terrain. And we're gonna use the magic of editing so that you don't have to watch me digitize this whole thing. But one trick is, you know, I'm pressing shift to get the pan mid digitization. That's a trick if you're gonna digitize and you want a scale smaller than the screen, you press shift, that'll give you pan mid digitization and then you can continue to digitize. All right, so now I have the stream polygon and we can choose, we can either give it its own new classification name or we can go choose a classification which we already have, stream with the meaning's end value of stream. All right, so now if we go into our geometry and we turn on our final Manning's n values, we can see that you know we've got 
our stream dominates there, and then whatever we gave these individual n values is what they're coming up with. All right, but what if we want to calibrate? Like when we calibrate, the thing that we're most likely to change are these n values. Well, you could change things down here, but if you change things down in your map layer, it's going to propagate through all your geometries. And your calibration is likely to be affected to one geometry, or your alternative might only be constrained to one geometry. So the first thing in here is you get another shot at these Manning's n values. You can go in and adjust these without adjusting the base n values. So let's say that you know, your water surfaces are too high and you feel like your high intensity uh, developed would be better as a 0 0.06 and so is your forest. <clears throat> or your stream is just, you know, your stream has to be 0 0.032. More likely you have to break that into multiple regions. Um, that will propagate through all land use in this geometry. But then also, let's say that you want to calibrate a particular region or you want an alternative. So let's say, for example, we're gonna pave paradise and put up a parking lot. Well, then within this calibration region, we'll call this parking lot. Now you have these base overrides, but you also have another override. Yeah, this is starting to, starting to get a little confusing. Um, but the way that I think about it is, you know, you have gridded data, distributed gridded data and vector classifications down in the map layer scale. And then you ha also have this like base reclassification and then vector modifications in the geometry scale. And so these won't propagate to other geometries. That's this ge geometry alone. And this is a little controversial because I think that, you know, it would be nice to just be able to say, well, in this parking lot region, everything's 50% higher or something like that. Or that with the base override too, we're gonna make everything like 10% higher. To give you the flexibility to define everything by land use, well, then we actually have to require you to define everything by land use. And if you're just gonna do a parking lot so that everything is going to become 0 0.03, well, then you're going to have to go and put that for everything here. Okay, but then if we stop and we go to the final n values, now these things out here will be based on land use, but in here, everything's your 0 0.03 that you've associated with that classification polygon. And the land use that's out here will have the new base levels. But what's the actual n value at the cells and cell faces? Let's go back to our grid, our perimeter, and let's actually choose our cell face. And remember, we can go to our cell face and we can ask to plot a property table. Now, how many n values are along this face? Well, at least three, according to these colors. And so we're gonna go and we're going to look at our Manning's n value as it varies with elevation, and it doesn't. We have a straight line. And actually, if we look at any of these other cell faces, they are also straight lines. And that's because previous versions of RAS were limited to just accepting what's ever the, at the center of the cell or the cell face for the n value for that element. But we have changed that. And so if we start editing and we go to our area properties, you'll see that you actually have the option to spatially vary your Manning's n value on your faces. And so how do you do this? Do you have to regenerate all your computation points? No, uh, if you regenerate your computation points, you will kind of by default regenerate your property tables, but you can just regenerate your property tables without changing your cells. Um, and you can do this if you have a different terrain or if you change your end value or your land use in any way. We'll just go in and change the property tables, but we won't do anything to your cells because maybe you've gone in and done some manual editing there. So I'm gonna come in here and say compute property tables. And so now if I come in here and I look at this end value, you'll see that the end value does change with elevation. It changes kind of in a kind of crazy non-monotonic way. Let's come over here to this one, which is kind of half and half. And we'll look at that. For this one, you know, one of them, there's two end values, a 0 0.03 and a 0 0.06. And the 0 0.06 becomes kind of linearly dominant as the water surface elevation increases because the 0 0.03, you know, is, 
is on the low end of the elevation scale. And so those are a few ways to define n values in RAS. A lot of the other spatially distributed data, whether it's soils for rain on grid, um, sediment bed material for 2D sediment modeling, um, infiltration, or this new porosity flow drag layer, they all follow a same basic idea of you create the 2D layers in the map layer, and then though everything in that can inherit into all geometries or all geometries that you associate it with, and then in the geometry itself, you can make local calibration changes. That's the basic model for how this works. Uh, I'm Stanford Gibson, the sediment transport specialist on the HC RAS team, and these model workshop reviews are funded by the H Agency SET program.